Welcome to season two of Players Talk Business Podcast with your host, Darius Jackson, Kayvon Frazier. Uh, it was a nice break. Season one was fire. Yeah, you know, season it was, one was fire. It was a season nice was little fire. break, but uh, we back to it. And there's no better way to get back to it than on Taco Tuesday. So we had to get a special guest. Taco and Tuesday. The one and only Taco Charlton, baby. What's up? What's happening, man? I'm glad y'all have me, man. Glad to be here. Happy to be here on no better day than Taco Tuesday. I Taco feel like that's my day on on Tuesday. With so. the Supreme on your neck, though. You know, you know, a little Supreme, yeah. you know, a little, you know, Supreme Taco. I, don't, I ain't no regular one, you know. No, de- you definitely not a regular one, bro. So, like, just a little backstory on Taco Charlton. I mean, so you was drafted first round in 2017 by the Dallas Cowboys, a kid from Columbus, Ohio. Mm. That went to the University of Michigan. Yes, indeed. Bruh, what a journey, dog. You gotta you gotta touch on you gotta touch on how a kid from Columbus goes against his his hometown <laughs> Ohio State team. It was it was, it was <laughs> How was that though? Yeah. How was that experience? Cause I know the like, you know, touch on that experience. You know, a little bit. I mean, the good thing was, like, my family kind of made it easy on me in a way. Like, they never really – obviously, I was born in Ohio State, so, I, you know, I'm from the east side of Columbus, um, mm-hmm. everything like that. My mom had me young at 16, so I, I'm real close-knit with a lot of my family. My uncles and aunts, they kind of like my brothers brothers and sisters to me just because I was, like, the youngest of the group uh, growing up in my grandma's house. Um, but, you know, it, it was kind of good. It was a blessing, uh, you know – Going to Michigan, obviously, you know, to get away from home, it kind of helped me grow up a little bit. Uh, obviously, I wanted, I really wanted to go out west. For, if I'm not lying, now I can say I wanted to go out west. Got like them USC. West Coast vibes. Um, you know, half my family out there. Uh, you know, my grandpa out there, everything like that. My aunts and stuff like that is out there. So cousins. So I really wanted to go out there, but mom wasn't having that. She, especially at 18, yeah. mom wasn't going for that. Me going yeah. that far. Yeah. Michigan was like a happy median and. At the time, I felt slated by how Ohio State viewed me. Um, yeah. I mean, actually, me and Coach Did they Vrabel, offer you? Did they, they offer didn't. You? They didn't. See, me oh, wow. and Coach oh. Vrabel talked about this when I was coming out. You know, he coached for the Titans now, so we had a little sit down when I was coming out. He actually admitted he was wrong, but he liked another guy over the state in the state over me. Uh, he was a DN. I took that personal. Mm-hmm. You know, coming out of high, I was I, I was that type of guy. I was very emotional on that on that aspect. So. Yeah. I was going to go somewhere that I was going to play you twice a year, you know, once a year oh, at yeah. least. You know, I was going to get a, get my get back. I was going to come back to, you know, at least twice. I was going to, you know, get a chance to play back in Columbus, which I wanted, um, was to come back home and play in front of all my family. So, How was um, those homecomings coming back, though? I know that was live. Oh, no, nah, I loved you know? it. Uh, I loved it. It was like th- those were the games I kind of looked in, looked up to and kind of, uh, you know, couldn't wait for was to come back home. Obviously, you know, that Michigan-Ohio State game, you look forward to it no matter what. But being able to, like, obviously, you know, when you play in Ann Arbor, it's still special. But going back home for me and playing in Columbus, you know, even though it's, you know, it's away at their home field, that was still special for me. Um, and I kind of treated that way, especially, like, my last game at Ohio State. I had to tear, tear them boys alive. So. Did y'all get that dub? We didn't. I had, through like, three sacks, though. <laughs> I had, like, three sacks, a whole bunch of quarterback hurries, hits, all that. You know, so you had a great loss. game. I had a great game, and we should have won. I still say we would have. I still say we won. We got cheated at the yeah. end on the hole. Was he short? Was he not? Yeah. Played a clip. He was short. But, <laughs> you know, you in Columbus. I know how the refs, they wanted to make it out there alive. I know how the city is. Ohio State loses. Riots. Yeah. Couches burn. Cars flipped over. I already know they ain't want none of that. So They ain't want that. Bro, so I grew up in Michigan. So I seen, like, so I've got to witness, like, how powerful. Not like, I didn't really, really understand the Michigan and Ohio State uh, rivalry. But I did understand, like, the Michigan and Michigan State rivalry. And that's a rivalry I didn't understand until I got to Michigan. (laughs) And it low-key, we had more smoke with Michigan State than we had with Ohio State. Like, the Ohio State, the name, and me personally, I had that. Like, just the fact of me going back home and that being the home team where I'm born, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. But me going back home and – I mean, but me going to Michigan and actually seeing the the – like how bad we like state don't like us, and we come back and we really don't like them, and that like going at it. Yeah, real the, the animosity between state and Michigan might be more real than how like obviously you know over the years it's starting to grow as we start to get back out of Ohio State, but 
like going in, like the Ohio State, I mean the Michigan Michigan State game, them games was really life. Like we don't like yeah. you. And you there were like some us. epic. Y'all had some epic games. Shoot the one game that that the that punt. Dude, yeah, 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 the punt. The, yeah. The, the punter, the yeah. punt. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> about that game, we should have won that game too. And secondly, even with that game, there should have been a penalty. That shouldn't even have happened. If you, I if, seen you run that. It, if you run it back, you can't hit the punt. You can't right, hit the right. snapper. On right, the, uh, right. You know, as you as you snapping the ball, yeah. Right. As he's snapping the ball, they just plow him. So he don't even finish the snap. It's a bad snap. Our punter was from Australia. He really ain't. <laughs> Dang. He ain't know all the rules, what he should do in them situations. <laughs> so I could, I can't even blame him. It was just, it was just a bad circumstance, and you know, they end up coming out with the win. But it should have been a penalty. That's on the refs too. It like I said, the refs cheated us out a couple of games. I'd have been cheated out some games. I, I do respect your your class though, because like y'all had to go through that whole culture change when Hardball came in. No, we did. T- was- touch on that a little bit. How different it was. How different it was uh, without Hardball, and then what he did when it, when he actually came in to to get people buying. Nah, it was it was a crazy process. Like it was at a point like you know I ain't gonna lie. I was I was you know going my freshman sophomore year. You know I was going through things at Michigan, so I, I was wanting to leave. It was really like help from like my father. You know, talking to my father, my mother. You know, them kind of keeping me grounded. Where I was like, you know, I'm gonna stay. And uh, even with Harbaugh, the first year, you know, it still was kind of shaky. What you know, because he it was such a difference uh, of of styles. You know, H- Hoke is is very personable, very family, very, you know, loving. He would come up, hug you, kiss you, whatever. Like, that's just how he is. He, uh, you know, and that's what you love. That's why we all went there, and that's why he was able to recruit us, you know, such a great class there. I mean, even, like, my senior class, we all, we had, what, 11 players drafted. Hope recruited all of us. Like, that was, you know, yeah, he got all person. of us there really just off the fact of his personality, his love, and how much we seen he cared for us. And that was just enough already to get us there. I mean, granted, they would, they did come off a season, Two years prior of me being there, where they beat Ohio State, you know, had eleven win season. So he still had some sets early on. Yep. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, my first two years was a little bit, you know, shaky for sure. And uh, like I said, being with Harbaugh, seeing how much it really was all about winning with him, and how it was, you know, and how much he he prided himself on that. It, it definitely did, you know, help you. And, I mean, help us, and then help, you know, even you know us as we were going to the league, know what we were, you know, getting into. So. Um, now, Harbaugh really came, like I said, he, he brung his guys, brung his system. It was kind of his way. You know, he's a little bit different, but that's just him. Um, I like it, too. I mean, I like I said, I learned, I learned, uh, you know, love, you know, playing for Harbaugh, too, because, one, he going to have his players back once he, he see you really – you work for him. And, and two, he's just going to tell you how it is. He's very blunt, and that's one thing. Yeah. It can yeah. be kind of crazy at times. I mean, if you're the worst <laughs> player, I've seen he'll interviews. let you know you're the worst player. If you're the best player, he'll let you know you're the best. Like so, he gonna tell it. He gonna he gonna call a spade a spade. So that's one thing you gotta love and you. I, I think that's about. real though. No, that's Man, what's that. That's I like I said, especially if you know you guys been in the league and been you know BS all around. You know, coach may tell you one thing, and yeah. then secondly, behind the back, you know, other things is oh, going 100%. on. I'm sure. I'm you sure you respect, went through it. I'm sure. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So I kind of respected the fact that Hardball he the type to be. You know, straight up honest with you of what's going on, so you know where you stand, and you know what you got to do to, you know, to fix it. So, yep, it was everything. It was it was a good situation. I mean, and then my senior year, Don Brown coming in and and helping us, it helping me really, you know, it let me loose and let me just play my game and let me be me. Yeah. And you know, the rest was history after that. And senior year is what put you in the spotlight. To get a chance, opportunity to even be drafted first round. Oh yeah, I mean the only person who thought I was going first round um, before my senior year was probably me <laughs> and my family. Uh, of course, but I used to, to I used to tell people real talk. I, I, like when I went first round, I, I was in L.A. at one of my guys, one of my uh, one of my homies' crib with his uncle, and uh, I was telling his uncle my junior year, like, oh y'all yeah, be going first round next year. You gonna be hearing about me, everything, all this extra thing like that. I, like I said at the time, I probably had what six stars to my name. Um and like I said, granted a year go by, he like I said, and it happened. He calls me, he's like, I remember you sitting here right here in my family room telling me exactly what was gonna happen. There it so, is. So like I said, sometimes I mean that's God too, just you know, you speak sometimes you gotta speak things to existence and then it happen. Um I mean I'm yep. sure we yep. all have done that. We all pray, we all, you know, speak things, you know, speak things to life. And uh those ones one of those things that I kept speaking to life and it ended up coming true. It's, and to me, to me, that's a lifestyle. Dope as hell, yeah. That's a lifestyle. You live by that. You speak it, you do it, and you pray about it. And what's meant for you is meant for you. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, I mean, speak about it, but then, you know, the work get put in also afterwards. Yep. So I'm definitely to. putting the work in. Face without works is dead, so. 
Yeah, we got that's crazy. Yeah. I just taught. I do a family Bible study every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I just taught. You know, yesterday, you know, my lesson was on faith without works. That's crazy. Yeah. You just brought that up. My dad. That's one of my dad's favorite saying. Faith, <laughs> faith without works is dead. So yeah. Yeah. he would make sure we always. He always kept me motivated. Kept me working. You know, ready to go like that. So that was kind of one of his favorite. You know, Man, I wanna I wanna uh, backtrack a little bit because you know I don't want to. Like, I want to shed light, you know, on your mom a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, because she was 16 when she had you? Yeah, yeah. My mom was 16, turned to 17. She finished high school, took care of me by herself, never really asked for handouts. I mean, my grandma would watch me, but never asked my grandma for money. She kind of handled all that. My mom at was 16? like... 16? 16, 16, 17, yeah. Wow. My mom, man, she That's was crazy. doing hair. My mom was a hair stylist, so she was doing hair in my grandma's crib, everything, handling work, trying to, you know, doing whatever she, she could to hustle, grind, to, you know, make that, you know. Everybody, you know, as much as I like to dress now, who really started this is really my mother. And it was something that, like, she started when, like I said, I was a young kid. I still had the fresh J's. I still had the fresh, you know, and one gear or whatever it is that's dropping at that time, the Nautica, whatever it is that was the popping. Nautica. and one. <laughs> nah, one. everything that was popping back in the, you know, 90, the shacks, 94, though. 95. Yeah. Like, I had it all. You know, the right, pennies, right. the, you know, I still, my mom may still have some of my little mm -hmm. pairs of shoes that I had that was, you know, the J's all. Yeah, you know, the Marbury's. Like I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have a Marbury. Starberries? No, the Starberries. I didn't have a Starberries. I didn't have a Starberries. I had the Starberries. I had the Starberries. What, man? I, I had the Starberries that looked like forces. I had six pairs of the Starberries, all different colors. I'm weak. Nah, I, I never, I never, nah, yeah, I, nah, I respect it. I know homies who had the Starberries, but I was never really a Starberry. I'm going to have, of course, the forces. I was a big Jordan guy early on, so I, I fell in love with Jays when I was you know, a little, a little jit. So, yeah. Um, but like I said, the fashion tip was definitely my mother, um, definitely coming in uh, and, and, you know, putting that and taking care of me, everything like that. And then like, obviously my father was the one who couldn't, who really showed me the game. The reason I'm here is like I said, a lot of, lot to do also my father. Cause I probably would have never played football if it wasn't for him for real. My family is a basketball family. I'm six six. My uncle's six seven. My other uncle's six eight. So like, oh my we gosh. all hoop, and that was yeah. kind of what we did. I hoop. We grew up hooping. I was. I remember I was like a kid, two three years old. And they'd go to the gym practicing at five six eight in the morning. I'd wake up crying if they left me. Like I was that, yeah. you know, involved <laughs> in that. Like you know, kind of into it. So, uh -huh. um, you know, I learned to love. Obviously, I fell in love with the game of basketball first. But then, like I said, my father showed me the game of football, and I quit it. Actually, I quit the first two times. And eventually, you know, I started to, you know, he, he came out. We had a little tussling thing where he kind of roughed me up a little bit. He was like, you're going to be tough now. And then, you know, kind of transitioned mm -hmm. on when I started to, you know, take over. And I started to fall in love with the game of football and kind of, you know, started to start in that as well. Yeah. And it builds, like, the game of football, uh, I was talking to a kid the other week, and they were talking about, uh, they were talking about practice. And I just kept it real. I was like, listen, I was like, as a kid, I hated football practice. Yep. That's the truth. We put on pads, especially in Texas. It's 100 degrees, and we doing jackknives and bear crawls mm -hmm. and rolls, and the shit sucks, right? But I was like, yo, but the friendships I made. Oh, and when we won, oh, my gosh, we went crazy. I couldn't wait for the pool party afterwards. But the relationships and the, and the values that taught me, it was like, yo, on Tuesday and Thursdays at 6 o'clock, it's time to put in this work. We're going to reap the benefits on Saturday. And you carry that through your whole life. You got to pay the price to have success. Mm -hmm. And that teaches you as a kid early. You got to clock in, and then you clock out. It's going to be worth it. But at the end of the day, you got to embrace it. It sucks. Oh, like, yeah, you quit nah. the first two times because it's hard. Now, the thing is, I didn't even quit. You got to realize I grew up from a – I didn't even grow up because of, of a practice. I didn't even make it past practice. I don't think – I probably did one practice, and I was like, this ain't me. <laughs> Take me back to a court. Like, if y'all give me a basketball and send yeah, me back yeah. to a court ASAP, then I'm not messing with this. Yeah. Then eventually, like I said, I started to, you know, find my passion, started to love the game, started to really, you know, see if this is something I could do. And then I also learned, you know, as I got older, that was probably, you know, seven, eight, nine years old or whatever. As I got older, I started to also see how, you know, the toughness that I was building in football would transition to basketball, where now I was a, I was a bully on the court. Like, you feel me? But it, so mm -hmm. it almost came, and, and they yeah. kind of helped each other. I mean, a lot of my football moves come from basketball, the way I can spin or the way I, I kind of move side to side, and all that, all that agility and I seen you know, the Euro step movement. a few times from you. Yeah, yeah. So all that body <laughs> movement is really a, a basketball, you know, kind of moves and everything like that that I kind of, you know, took and changed the game almost. So you and your dad uh, had a good relationship your whole uh, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. he, he was a real so good. so my yeah my father figure in your life. Oh, uh, my dad was a great father figure. I can't even, 
uh, I can't even complain. Obviously, even now. I mean, now we, you know, we, you know, your da- he, my dad, you know, he's strong minded. I'm strong minded. So it was a lot of bashing. Yeah. It was a lot of head. But besides that, man, I couldn't. Like I said, I would definitely wouldn't be where I was if it wasn't for his guidance and his, you know, and you know him coming to my life and you know doing everything he does. So yeah, no, nah, definitely. Like I said, I'm definitely a mama's boy. So you know, you know, my mama had me so young and everything like that. She's been the one. So definitely a mama's boy. My dad even know that, so he don't take that to heart. <laughs> side note, <laughs> side note, when you posted a picture with your mom, you know how some people just be flattering, like, oh, and it looks like your sister. I, Oh, God, I thought it was your sister. I had no idea. Yeah. And I was like, that's Taco's mom? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, so that's yo, what what's going that's on? What, that's what happens when you have a young mom yeah. all the time. It'd be funny. At the, <laughs> at the, like, we go, we can go anywhere from the mall. We go out to eat or whatever, and people think, like, oh, that's your girl. Or, like, oh, that's your wife. <laughs> people be trying whatever. to get on your mom, bro. Or, like, nah, people, <laughs> or people will want to, they look at her, but they look at me and be like, oh, <laughs> man, I Yo. But obviously it's cool. I mean, I, I, I'm sure my pops, uh, he he cool with that yeah. too. Man. He, For you sure. know, he makes no, I think, <laughs> bro, I think it's dope because both of y'all got very. I mean, it sounds like y'all got very very similar relationships with with y'all dads. Yep. You know, a lot of people know about me. I didn't really grow up mm-hmm. having a father figure in my life. Yeah. So so it's dope to hear y'all talk about that experience with y'all fathers because now that's something that I can apply to my kids now. So I think that's dope yeah, as hell, nah, bro. bro. It's a it's a blessing, bro. I mean, I, like I said, I. I I mean, we had talked about it more off camera. I ain't going, you know, go all the way too deep. But it was, like I said, I was real life blessed, real talk. Like, I, w- I would definitely say that. Um, yeah, yeah. My father didn't have to do what he did, but he did. And yeah. like I said, it definitely yeah. turned out great for me. Oh, that's dope, bro. Yep. That's, that's, that's dope. So, so fast forward, and I mean, you had a great senior year. Uh, you get drafted first round. Mm-hmm. And not only do you get drafted first round, but you didn't get drafted first round by, like, the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, you got drafted first round by the Dallas Cowboys. What was the – how did you feel? Because, you know, a lot comes with that. Money, yeah. um, expectations. Um, fame. Fame. I mean, a lot comes with that. How did you balance that, and what did it feel like? Um, I mean, I was young. Uh, so, I, at the time – I mean, I, obviously, I was excited. I was I was mad at the time. I was happy and excited at the time just because I thought I, I – thought and I, you know – I felt I should have went earlier at the time, so I was kind of that, like, oh, I should have went, you know, 20. I, I don't know why I went 28. Like, what? <laughs> um, so it was that type of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it was a situation where I almost could have went to Miami, who I eventually went to afterwards, but I thought they were, like, 22 or 21, <laughs> so I thought I should have went there. So I, I, uh-huh. afterwards, I didn't even think Dallas was going to pick me. I was actually surprised, and they did. And then obviously, it was a good experience. Obviously, my, uh, my dad grew up a Cowboys fan, so, you know, his best friend, you know, Grew up a Cowboys fan, so a lot of our people in that area, like they said, they love the Cowboys or they love the Steelers. Since Columbus don't really have a pro team, you know, yeah. and you may yeah. get some Browns fans in there, stuff like that. But you know, a lot of people are team, you know, favors of you know so many different teams, whether it's Cowboys, Steelers, you know, Browns in that area. Yeah. Um. So my dad grew up a Cowboys, so it was a, it was a dream come true to play for his favorite team. Um. Like I said, growing up, I had Cowboys blankets and everything like that. Just just because you know, huh? he was trying yeah, to convert. He was trying to convert yeah. me. Um. <laughs> I really didn't have like so, but I really didn't grow up a Cowboys fan, so it was kind of hard. I grew up a Ohio State fan. That was really it. Like, yeah, you know, grew you up didn't in Columbus. No like, really. it was really no pro team. Yeah. You could, you know, cheer someone <laughs> for the college team. Um, but it was a dream come true. Um, like I said, I, I I came in with a group, a good group of guys. I mean, I'm pretty sure at first, like you know, at the D line, I'm pretty sure at first, you know, they didn't like me. I see Malik told me they didn't really like me. I, well, n- before they met me, they was trying not to like me just because you got to realize when you drafted, especially first round, you're there to replace somebody. Um, whether somebody had a ba- bad year or whatever it is, you're there to replace somebody. So, obviously, the person you're there to replace, you're not going to really like that as much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at the time, you know, so at the time it was a little bit of that. But, obviously, once I got there, you know, once I got in the vibe with the guys, you know how I was in the locker room, I kind of – Rocked with everybody, uh, yeah. you know, to the point where my second year I created the whole Hot Boys and, you know, everything kind of, you know, took no, off from there. Sure. So I still got a hat in my closet, bro. Yeah, hot yeah. Boys so, hat. So <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was really just that after a while, of course, I you know, I, I was able to kind of mingle through different groups and, you know, whether it was, you know, defense, offense, whatever, I kind of got along with everybody in the locker room. Uh, it was a good group of guys there. Um, obviously it was – but like I said, the Cowboys was really – like I said, it was a growth situation. I mean – you know, things happen. I ain't going to, you know, nah, put too many into people. It. <laughs> we get it. I mean, it's, well, it's ain't crazy. Ain't no sugar coating it. It's, yeah. it. No, it's like, so I, my career, I played for six different teams. 
And I was loyal to the Cowboys until I wasn't, until they wasn't. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I was in their system early. And then my second, you know, I got cut during Christmas, like on my rookie year. And I went to Cleveland. On Christmas Day? Two weeks, or like 10 days before Christmas. Okay. So I got cut and I went to Cleveland, who was 0-14. I mean, it was just... It was just like a knockout punch, bro. You know, I'm about to go to the playoffs. I get cut. And then I tear my ACL, right? But then in 2018, I, I signed back with Dallas, and I, I truly felt like I had unfinished business. But, you know, it's just tough. It's just tough when you get in a situation with Dallas and you're loyal to an organization, and you know you learn about the business. And it so was, how was yeah. your experience? I like? mean, my experience was obviously uh, I came in as a, as a rookie, you know, kind of – Hot head in a way, but you know, just felt like you know, uh, I wasn't. I could be approached, but I, I was able. I was very combative. So if you came at me kind of crazy, or if you came at me, I felt like sideways, or you was trying to demean me, my demean my character, or whatever it may be. I would come back the same way, you know, aggressively as well. Um, now I'm kind of like I just let it go. I don't really have the. You know, I'm kind of older, so it's just more so y'all got it, but. At the time, it was really like that. I felt like, you know, a certain situation, I didn't get a fair chance. Or, you know, it was a lot of times, you know, they would maybe, you know, coaching-wise, they would pick on me or try to, you know, do things or try to point, you know, whatever it may be mm -hmm. um, out. Or the fact is, you know, they would try to say things that weren't necessarily true, whether it's, all oh, he don't practice hard or he don't do this hard. And it's like, right. bro, people who know me know, like, I work. Like, working hard ain't nothing that's like – obviously, I wouldn't have got first round. I wouldn't have went from six games the first round if it wasn't – if I didn't put in work. So, that was kind of the thing. It was kind of like they would try to make it seem like I'm not doing what I'm doing. And that's one thing I pride myself on is how hard I work. Um whether it's I go to Miami and train with my guys at Alpha Athlete, whether I'm here in Dallas and I train at Kayvon's, whether I – before I was training – you know, before Kayvon even had his drum, I was training at EXO. So it didn't really matter. I would always make sure I was put in work, whether it was – you know, I would train there and I would go with my guy BT. Shout out to BT who yep. in Seattle now, my dog. Yep. Um, but I was always putting in work. And at times I felt slighted that, you know, it was almost meant that if I'm not putting the work in right in front of them, they don't think it's been done. Yep. Um, and if it's not how they want it, it was kind of like, oh, well, we don't like it. Yeah. Um, but at the time, it was just a lot of fight, and it really wasn't even over football at the time. It was a lot of stuff over, like, you know, <clears throat> complaining about how I dressed or how I stand or, yeah. you know, you uh, we you showed up three minutes. We wanted you six minutes here before the meeting. Like, you, whatever it is. It was like, you know, little things. I mean, obviously they were trying to, you know, pull out what they wanted or wanted me to act like. And uh, it was kind of a fight of that. Uh, uh, because, like, me, I was the type of person where it's like, if you're trying to make me a better football player, I'm all for it. Like, I, I want to be a better football player. I want to, you know, perform better. I want to play better. I want to make plays to help a team, you know, everything like you know everything like that. But when you start to try to change my personality, change how I dress, how I talk, how I walk, all right, now we, you know, we're getting into stuff that's necessarily the same football no more. And that's what, you know, when we have an end-of-the-year talks and, you know, we going – 10 minutes and we ain't even discussed really what I need to work on football wise that and it's really you know how I dress or why I stand like that or you know why you walk or why you get here two minutes before the meeting and not five like you know like I say it's stuff that maybe I did have to learn you know be earlier time but it's just like you know not to pick on that it just was you know make me a better football player not you know don't yeah. Try to mold yeah. you. Try to mold I do get that. To make you, yeah. You know? I do get that because yeah. like you know now as you saying that um you know, because I was there damn near yeah. the whole time. Yeah. With you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, the whole 100%. time you was on the Cowboys, I was there too. Um, and I, I, I do remember that those was the main things that the coaches or, or people were saying about you. And, you know, you take a look back at, like, our coaching staff back then, right? You know, and I love – like, like you know, I don't have anything against Gary, to, to be honest, like, and me personally. But I do think that they – we're drafting people and bringing people in that fit into what they, you know, personality their wise mold, too. For sure, their for sure. their mold, right? They, they yeah. want to mold people the way that they wanted them instead of just finding like the the best football players and putting the best people or football players out there on the field. They wanted like a whole package of people, right? People that have like the whole package. And I think the the coach that they got now, he let people beat him. 
You, you know, you look at bro. If you yeah. hung around them dudes now on the nah, Cowboys nah, team, 100%. Nah, it's nah, different. I mean, it's completely in, different. In yeah. different places, you'll see that. Like, like that's why I love. Uh, for instance, like that's why I love Kansas City. Like, because one of uh, Coach Reed's biggest thing is show your personality, which is like basically yeah. show who you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was the one thing I love. Like, because it's not like now. It's like you know when you get to show you, we had a freedom to basically show your personality, show who you are on the field. I'm a, you know, you're gonna really play yourself. It's not like you trying to. You're going to play like yourself. You're going to play at your best ability. It ain't like you trying to – you working half the day to be somebody you're not, and then, yeah. oh, yeah, when I get on the field, now I'll be me. It's it's call, it's kind of hard to work like that. Obviously, in my situation in Dallas, like I said, it was it was really a – grow. it was growing pains, obviously. It was growing situations. Um, you know, like I said, I was with – also, I was with a veteran coach at the time. You know, I'm a young guy with a veteran coach. Yeah. It was that age gap. I'm dressed in certain ways. He not he not understanding why I'm dressing like this, why I got this on, why I'm wearing so – you know – yeah. So it was it was it was a lot of that. That age gap made it a difference. Um, I try to take every learning experience, though. I mean, obviously, like I still learned a lot. I still was blessed with you know great vets, whether it was you know and and Ty and them guys uh, around me that you know to keep me grounded, to kind of keep me uh, you know good in ways when it was you know certain days where I'm yeah. like you know I'm not messing with this or I'm about to walk out whatever it is. Those are the guys that kind of kept me grounded, kind of kept me okay. So. You know, you had some good vets. No, nah, yeah, so I had some good vets. Good vets. I had some definitely good vets around me. Um, How'd you like Flo? In uh, Miami? In, in Miami, yeah. Uh, Me and Flo, I mean, like I said, I had my best year in Miami with five sacks. I had, what, five sacks in eight games or you something like crazy. that? Yeah. Um, But uh, obviously, not. Nah, Flo is a good coach. I think he's, he'll do well. Uh, at the time, I just didn't like the system. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, they was rushing three. Drop eight, and that's cool when you got you know a dog nose and a dog other uh, outside rusher. But like I said, I just it was basically me, and then uh, I mean we had some guys, you know Christian Wilkins, and we had you know some guys, but yeah, but that was the rebuilding. Yeah, that was, that rebuilding. was rebuilding. So yeah. like nobody, you know, it was re- like I said, I led the team in sacks, and I only played eight games really. So I mean, I kind of tell you, it really wasn't you know. So when we got out there to rush, I was getting you know two, three yeah. guys, you know, blocking me. A lot of the attention was on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, with no help, um, so I didn't like that system at the time. I wanted to, and especially coming from Dallas, where we rush for, we getting off the ball, we playing a certain oh, way yeah. to go to that. It was kind of like, oh no, I don't like that. I want to go back to this type deal. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so it was really, it was really that. I'm mean, obviously like after Dallas, I was kind of in a, you know, in a shock, you know, to go from, you know, especially at, you know having a good preseason that I had, having a good camp. Um, and the crazy thing was I kind of knew, you know, I knew the situation in Dallas was going to go the way it was, you know, before it did. I mean, that's why I was having to – I remember having to talk on the phone with my dad, like, listen, I got to go off in camp, got to go off preseason because they ain't really like me and they going to start to, you know, really bad mouth me. At the end, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. I knew, you know, camp camp is open eyes. You know, yep. when we first come back, it's open eyes. Preseason, open eyes. So yep. I know you can't really lie what I'm doing. The fans see it. Media see it. It's open to everybody. Yep. But I knew, like, once you get in that building and they can kind of create the narrative, I knew it was over for me. Because then it was going to be, oh, well, he ain't practicing hard. He ain't doing this enough. And the media rise something. that way. And they're going – obviously, if it's me versus the coaches, I don't even – they're going to believe the coaches. There ain't yeah. no point to have that <laughs> argument. So, yeah. Um, so it was that narrative. That's why, like I said, that camp, everything, I tried to have the best camp or, the, you know, crazy preseasons. I had, like, what, three sacks my last game yep. in the preseason. So, um like two force fumbles or something crazy, so it was. Uh, it was, was, mind, was that man. your? Was yeah. that your? Fo- yo, your third year? Yeah, it was my third year. Yeah, I remember that yeah. last game. So they went. threw me out there because, uh, <laughs> uh, damn, somebody got hurt. Well, like, hold on, like, who was it against? Dono, Dono got uh, hurt last. The Texans. No, Jamil got hurt. And Jamil got hurt, and I wasn't supposed to play, so I had tennis shoes on. No, I wore my cleats, but they was untied, and I wasn't yeah. supposed to play. Yeah. And you know, and and we didn't have a lot of safeties. I think we only had five or five on the roster. Yeah. And Jamil ended up getting hurt, had to come out. So I had to tie my shoes up, you know, not not warm, didn't warm up the whole time, that's and I had to go out there and hit some people. And I was like, man, that's – man, that, that last game of preseason, bro. Oh, wait. I didn't play – so I didn't play in you game didn't play four. You did play game that four. Was, that was okay, game three. Okay, so game four yeah, yeah, is yeah. the – okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, game yeah, three yeah. was the game I went on. Game four at that time – I didn't play. Yeah, you, I had, didn't, you didn't play. Yeah, yeah I didn't yeah. play. So I, I had started all preseason that year. So I started yeah. game one, two, and three. Didn't play game four. That's usually how it was. And then, you know, and then they, let you, they let you go after that? Yeah, and then they didn't play me. So I had like three sacks, you know, that last game. They didn't play me fourth game. We go to the week one. All right, so this is where the Cowboys situation get up. So this is how they try to do me at the end. They wanted to keep you healthy. No. 
Uh, yeah, they want to give me housing because they, 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 exactly. they knew what they were about to do. They already so made their decision. They yeah. already, they already had made their decision that I was yeah. kind of gone at the time, obviously. And you know, Marinelli already told you know my guy, my age, and everybody that you know he doesn't like my personality. Therefore, he's not playing me. Like period. Yeah. Like he don't like how I, he don't like me. You know, as a per, like not really as a person, but he don't like how you know how I am, how yeah. I act, my way I am, whatever. <laughs> that therefore it don't really matter what I do in the field. He's not playing me. Um. Once we get down, no, you know, once we, you know, we pack in a week to get ready for mm-hmm. week one, X, Y, and Z, and then, you know, it comes out. They try to tell, well, I'm thinking I'm playing. Obviously, I've been starting the whole year. Right. I've been starting right. in camp, you know, everything like that. I'm thinking I'm at least playing. If I'm not starting, I'm playing at least. Um, they tell Ty, basically, like, don't tell Taco, but we're thinking about not playing him. We're going to play, uh, it was a rookie at the time. Dorian? Was Dorian a rookie? Nah, Dorrance. Dorrance, yeah. Nah, Dorrance. DA wasn't a rookie. DA, DA was the second guy. Um, it was a, it was like a DN drafted late round that year. Maybe played like in the fourth quarter of preseason. Joe Jackson. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. Joe Jackson or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He didn't really play much even yeah. in preseason. He, if he did, it was like third, fourth quarter. You know, everything like that. So, yeah, you know, yeah. the later guys, everything like that. So, yeah. not even thinking that's a – a possibility, but they tell Ty, oh, that's a possibility. And they said their reasoning was, oh, well, he plays some special teams. Right. All right. Um, right. So they tell him, but they said, don't tell him X, Y, and Z. Don't tell Taco. We'll tell him Saturday before the game. And it's like, even that is like, bro, I got family coming down. I got people flying down. I'm thinking yeah, I'm playing. Yeah, I'm yeah, thinking everything saying, cool, yeah. everything like that. So then that's when Ty tell me, like, hey, you know, Ty was a real one. That's why I love Ty to this day. That's my dog. But he the one who came down and told me, like, hey, man, they ain't want me to tell you, but I couldn't keep this from you. They talking about you might not play this week. I'm just letting you know. So that's when it was like, obviously, it was like, you know, you know, he told me, like, hey, don't tell the coaches I told you, but I just want to get your mind ready, X, Y, Z. Like I said, I had some good vets that would make sure, like, mentally. Yeah, hey, no, that, shit was, like, that shit was dope. Like, um, And you kind of knew what it was after that. Yeah, I mean, so I knew what it was. The only problem I, I got mad about was, like, like, them telling my agent one thing of, like, no matter what Taco does, he's not playing X, Y, Z. Because after that, I called my agent, like, hey, they said I'm not playing. So he get it, you know, he talked to them and talked to the Cowboys, the you yeah. know, owner, everything like that. And, yeah. and that's when it come down to no matter what I do, I'm not playing. But then they start telling the media, well, he's not working hard enough. He's not practicing hard enough. X, Y, Z, he needs to practice or work hard enough to work his way in to mm-hmm. the lineup. Yeah. So then it makes me look bad in perception of, like, oh, you don't work hard. But people who know me, you see me yeah. work out every day. 100%. Working out that that's what I love to I love to work. I want to be I want to be a better player. So I actually I that's what I, like it ain't like I work out just to work like I work out. Yeah. I really want to be good. Like I really want to be a great. I really want to you know do this. Yep. Um. So like obviously I took I took you know pride in it. was almost like a slap in the face to come back and say like oh I don't work hard because it's just like oh y'all see the work I just put in y'all seen the preseason I had like that was all from the work. Mm-hmm. Um. So it was a lot of fight with that. Um. It came to the point, I remember I slept on, I think, for like a day. I came back, maybe, like, that was like a Wednesday. I came back to Tyler Thursday, like, hey, bro, I'm sorry. I told you I can't talk to the coaches, but I got to ask them, what's up? Like, why ain't I playing? Yeah. So that's when I had to, I remember I'd go up to Cat, go to go up talk to Cat. Like, Cat, what's up? At first, they try to play dumb with me, you know. Oh, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I like, just see Cat doing that. <laughs> yeah, like, what you talking about? Like, so they just like, huh? Yeah, they, that's all I'm like, all right, bro. That's hey, you know. I'm like, that's, it got to the point. I'm like, bro, Ty, bro. So when Ty and I'm coming in, and it was like, hey, bro. Can I, can I, before I told him, no, I went to Ty first. I was like, hey, Ty, right. I know you told me, but listen, I love he got to just figure out what's going on, right, X, right, Y, right. Z. You know, well, I just want to go talk to him. So he's like, you know, I respect that. All right, bet. Let's go talk. So he's like, I'll go with you. So Ty actually went with me to talk to him or anything like that. So once Cat saw Ty, he knew. I knew. So then it was just like, oh, well, he's played special teams, so we may think about X, Y, and Z. The first two weeks of the season, I didn't play because, you know, of other stuff. But yep. they said it was special teams, and it was like, bro, he played – I want to say he played like two or three snaps of special teams the whole – all every special yeah. teams in the first two games, he played, he played like three total snaps. So it was like you dressed. So you trying to say the excuse was those three plays is what y'all. Well, they knew, but at the time they knew what they needed. It's just a matter of like that's why I come back and I say like Mm -hmm. I respect Harbaugh so much because he would tell me what it was. He'll tell you straight up what it was. He'll tell you straight up. Um, Versus trying to figure out yourself. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. So what y'all saying is y'all telling me? Did y'all tell Mm -hmm. my? So obviously I kind of and I kind of left in a bad way. I had remember I. 
I was kind of mad. I was getting mad. Like, the more, you know, the more waiting game, the more, like, oh, I remember I think I went the first two games and ain't played. So, it was just more of the waiting game. I ain't, you know, me not playing, I was starting to get kind of anxious. So, I remember I, I was actually working out. It was crazy thing is I was working out at the Star, at the Cowboys, at the, at the facility. And, uh, well, Wojcik, that's my dog, childhood coach Wojcik. Um, and I see a tweet. Somebody sent me a tweet of, one of, you know, Stephen Jones, you know, Stephen talking about me or something like that. And it was kind of like another thing where they coming at me again in the media. Like I said, I'm a young guy, so it was like, oh, you going to come at me again? So then I responded the same way, which was kind of – I shouldn't have, but I did. You were over it. Yeah, I was you, over it. Like, how you respond, though? The how hell with this? I'm finna <laughs> – uh, It said something about me. So I said, like, something like – You responded on me. Twitter? I should respond on Ooh, Twitter. Shit. So, like, while I'm working out, like, me at work, like, say I just got to hit a bench. They say, I'm you like, took a picture. What? Like, what? Oh, what? So I I said something like, oh, re- oh, release me, question mark. Like, I quoted whatever he said, release me, question mark, and I sent it, and I went back to working out. Needless to say, later that, like, you know, a couple hours passed, of course, my agent called me, like, what's going on? They're going, whoa, 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 how do you get, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Shout out my dog, shout out my agent. Um, So, obviously, you know, we take it down, but, I, you know, I, at that point, you kind of see we, yeah. you know, we going at it, so – you know, they called me, what, later that day? Like, you know, that was maybe like a Monday or Tuesday or something. They called me like the next day, like, you know what, we don't even got to come in tomorrow. We just going to cut this off right here. So that was probably my last day actually been a Cowboy was that, that last workout. Yeah, bro. was that tweet. That's crazy. Was that tweet, yeah. But you had to do something. I mean, you knew what it was. Yeah, I knew what it was. was. I just wanted to, to play ball. I wanted yeah. to play ball. It was to that point where I just wanted to play ball. Whether yeah. it was obviously, you know, nothing to get. Obviously, I wanted to play for Dallas. If it was a different situation. That's why even for when sure. I left, I remember the first thing was people were saying was like, "Oh, if the coaches, you know, now were here, then you would have been great. You would have loved these coaches. You could have played for these guys." So, obviously, you know, later on speaking, maybe if it was you know different situations, it would have been totally different. You know, here could have turned out totally different, um, but. You know, things happen. It's a learning experience. Obviously, I learned from that. Um, kind of, you know, how the game is. Kind of, you know, how to how to navigate, you know, through the league. And, and that was kind of mm-hmm. like my first kind of eye opening experience was was in Dallas for real. Yeah, yeah. I think ultimately, <clears throat> I think ultimately that experience probably shaped you for something bigger coming coming up. Oh, no, hundred percent. I mean, it definitely shaped me now. Like, you know, obviously, I'd have been through different teams, uh, but like, obviously, I know how to deal with it. I kind of, I'd, I'd have been through, you know. The, the up and down, been through kind of the grind of, you know, yeah. you know, having to deal with certain situations, especially after the Dallas situation. So now when things, you know, happen, things arise, um, I know how to deal with it, you know, mentally and everything like that to kind of, you know, be cool and kind of keep on working, keep motivated. So Yeah, see, that's and, dope. That's dope. how old are you now? 28. 28. Yeah, see, that's that crazy. magic age. So at 28, 27, 28, I feel like, uh, I feel like you really start to, uh, you think differently. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, say, scientifically, I, you should, you, you should. I mean, I feel like if you're growing, you should. Obviously, yep, it's growth. So, I feel like if you're still thinking the same way at 28 that you did at 22, 20, you know, 23, then something was wrong. So, um, obviously, if you ain't grow over the time or you, you know, you didn't start to kind of mature, then obviously there's is a process that has to occur. And obviously, I, I, like I said, I definitely had. To, I, I mean, I still feel young, which is good. But obviously, you know, through years, I was like, like, like you know, and also been around. Been uh, around a great group of like people, friends, you yeah. know, friendships, yeah. uh, partnerships, whatever it is. You just grow. You grow from people um, that you're around. So it's been a blessing. I've been blessed in my life to be around a great, you know, group of people. Whether it's y'all, whether it's people at you know working out, you know, other teams, meetings, whatever, business partners. Um, I've be- definitely been you know blessed to be. You know. And you, and you are young. I mean, you're 28. I'm 29. K, you're 28. You're turning mm-hmm. 29 soon. But you are young. Right. And uh, you're in a prime, you know, we're in the prime of our lives, right? No, but no. so you decided you're you're now going on year seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, stay tuned. You're going on year seven, but you decided to make Dallas home base. Yeah, I did. Like I said, I love Dallas. Like even when I first came here, I love the city. I fell in love with the city early. Yeah, um, I thought you would have went to Cali. <laughs> yeah, I'm the <laughs> yeah, out of here, man. Yeah, everybody know I love the West Coast. Uh, I love the West Coast, man. I got my family out there. I love L.A. Uh, most definitely. Um, I really need to uh, – I uh, plan to go back. Actually, I'm, I told Twak I want to go back this year and kind of help him give back. I was there so much. Uh, you know, the past couple of years I kind of, you know, been away with COVID and everything. Mm-hmm. Ever since then I ain't really been, you know, as much as going back. But how I was there so much on my family, I definitely want to, you know, get more involved in the community out there in L.A. and definitely try 100%. to give back more yeah. um, to the city. Um, but, uh, yeah, I definitely – as much as I love Dallas, I definitely do love L.A., but 
like I said, Dallas is home base, man. I, like I said, I fell in love with the city early, fell in love with the people, the vibe. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, I'm not a boy no more, so you don't get that. But uh, you still, like I said, it's still a lot of love getting shown. People still show me love. People still, you know, get treated, you know. Yeah, but it's almost like once you play for Dallas once, yeah, everybody still associates you with the Cowboys, especially here in Dallas. Yeah, you know, yeah, and I think definitely. that's the dopest. Most definitely. I think that's yeah. the dopest part about Dallas because it don't, like, it don't, like, people don't forget that. People don't forget, like, wh- what you did as um, you was on the Cowboys. Yeah, most you definitely. know what I mean? And like I said, my, I don't know, like I said, my story in Dallas, I feel like I said, different situation, different different coaching, it could have been, like, way different. I just feel like I said, the the, per, the different personalities that I had with the last coaching staff just didn't mesh well and didn't. Yeah. Just, but it, damn, it but damn football, you know, you yeah, Taco yeah. Charleston living in Dallas, damn football, damn what they think you could have did or should have did. You're here because you called this home and you have connections, you built relationships oh, yeah, yeah. here. And so that's really what it was. All they give a damn about is like, yo, Taco Charleston was a first round pick, had a star on his helmet. We going to support him. They don't give a damn about your stats. They don't nah. care. And in 10 years, they definitely won't care. But they yeah. will always remember that you was a cowboy and had a no, story. They will yeah. always remember that. They'll they always, will always and you'll always have that. those yep. relationships. Yep. So it's like we could we could fall we could always go back and look back. I definitely reflect on my career, but as time goes on, it's crazy that I really don't care. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really don't care. It don't yeah. bother me yeah. because you have to have that certain amount of peace to know that you did everything you could uh-huh. and you made it to the pinnacle, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We all did. We made it to yeah. the pinnacle and now it's and now it's on to the next. It's not on to the next for you yet. But for me and Kay, yeah. we made that we made that transition and yeah. it's on to the next. And guess what? We gonna be in the NFL and whatever other field we are in. And we're, I think that, we're just elite. I think that's also, you know, it comes with having a vision too of 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 something that's that's further. Cause, you know, how I look at having a vision is like once you have a vision, you don't even think about anything else that happened in the past. All you're thinking about is like what I'm about to encounter. So so bringing that up. You know, I know you're doing a lot of stuff, you know, off the field as well, too. And business venture, you, you just mentioned business partner. So what different things are you in uh, now? Uh, I'm in a couple of different things. I mean, obviously, um, you know, my big thing, as I told you, is, is I'm big in fashion. I love clothes, love it like that. So I have my own uh, fashion, you know, brand or clothing company called Unloaded that, I, you know, that I kind of do. It's a playoff of feelings. Uh, as you've been, um, you know, as That's we've tough. been in the league, we've been around right. so much right. that yeah. we kind of built the, like, kind of bottled in or kind of hold this and kind of hold what you what you feel, how mad you is, or if you ain't liking mm-hmm. this situation, this coach, this whatever, you kind of got to keep it. This is So I kind of wanted to make a clothing brand that kind of, like, where you could feel that, where the colors, the colors was kind of based off of feelings, the the words and everything was kind of based off of like what you, what we feel, what we go through, um, and kind of make clothes that kind of can kind of give us almost like a representation of that, like we wear, because it's almost like you kind of wear what you feel, whether it's like you know, hey, that's funny when how you, when, you, when, <laughs> yeah. you, when you when you kind of feeling down, when you whatever, you may want to wear more baggy, more clothes, more you know, kind of stuff to kind of hide versus when you up going, you may want to wear stuff that's tight where you could just show yourself you feel good, you're kind of Yo, you know you're showing yourself. So it's, it's like it's, so it's kind of like as a as a as a guy like that has been through so much up and down and. As a somebody love fashion, I wanted to make a brand kind of for that, and that's kind of why I made uh, Unloaded and uh, kind of want to, you know, kind of expand with that. I got a great team with that. Got a great, you know, designer that helps me also. Like I said, I mean, I, I design, but also she's she's dope. She kind of puts everything together and makes everything go smoothly. So shout out to new to, to new my designer and then my guy who helps run the management side, Alex, man, is, is, is great. So I have a great team on that, and um, so I do that. Um, and I love clothes, so obviously I'm into that. Uh, I'm in commercial real estate as well, so I try to invest in commercial properties. I love, you know, my mom's a real estate agent now also, so she's more in the housings, but I love, you know, kind of investing in the right areas to kind of get, yeah. you know, commercial real estate and just learning more in that aspect. I've been blessed to also be, you know, to meet kind of uh, – some great people who in that in that aspect. I mean, like I said, I hope I keep me more and keep you know diversifying yeah. myself into that. But um, yeah, what kind of properties are you in? <clears throat> so mostly more in the apartments, like owning units, like I want to get multi-family units, class A, class B uh, apartment units. So uh, I kind of want to get, like I said, as I as I grow, as I you know get older, I kind of want to get more into that. Also, um, you know, one thing is uh, my uncle in LA. He owned a lot of units in LA, so I started mm-hmm. to see that young. And, and seeing kind of how they live and kind of to see, you know, how, how, uh, how wide that's, 
how it builds basically generational wealth. How now even my cousin 100%. is my cousin is eating off what my uncle did. You know, yep. kind of you know basically not kind of wanted that to bring that same thing for my family where you know no matter what for generations y'all you know y'all can eat off of this y'all own this or y'all have stake in this whatever it may be. So that's something also going that's that's I'm, that I'm getting you know more into that I've done you know I've invested into a couple properties but I want to you know keep doing that and then. Um, I'm starting up with Demarcus, um, our own uh, GTA server. So yeah, you gotta you gotta go on, into that, bro. If y'all want GTA Discord, server, like yeah, 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 I was yeah. like, so it's five. It was called five M. Um, if y'all play GTA, it's like GTA basically, but it's on the computer computer PC. Um, and you basically we kind of it's kind of our own world. So it'll be the Hot Boys, you know, world. You know, kind of the group I made uh, while I was in Dallas that you know. Um, we kind of, you know, forming that bond. So we're going to make our own world where it kind of builds off of, you know, different things, different things we like to do. Uh, we can customize it different ways. So it's going to have a little taste of Dallas where a lot of us came together and made this brotherhood at. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it'll be a community. So join our Discord, man. Join the community. Come play with us. Come talk with us. We'll be on there. We'll be vibing. We'll be talking with the fans, anybody. So it'll be fun. It'll be a fun chance. It'll be a fun game. Um, it's its own game? See, I don't understand that. You know, like you, you um, got like to expand off. Is it? I don't in, really get it. So, is it in? Yeah, like so. So you basically you could reach out to engineers or uh, I don't know the right word for it, but you know the computer guys, and they can basically they they can make the game. They basically can. Is it a Web three game? Yeah, it's like a yeah. So they basically can you know make the world itself, and you can customize it how you want. So the same people who make like how they make GTA, they can you know it's like the same you know game developers. So it's actual game. It's actually is game. it on the blockchain or is it just like a like a GTA based type of game? Like what kind of game is it? It's it's basically you said Discord. That's why. I asked. Oh yeah. So, Discord, so it's like so. to get to the Discord. So the Discord is community. Obviously, once you join the Discord, you'll have access to the game. Oh. Um. Then now now you can play the game online on Five M or whatever. Like I said, yeah. it is basically is GTA. So everything that you'll remind you of it or remind you a lot of GTA. It's just more customization. So, yeah, so you can shoot people. Yeah, you'll still be to shoot people. Okay. You can do whatever. Like I said, y'all can join the world. Like I said, it's GTA. I'm going to shoot y'all ass. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> uh, like, so it's like that. Everybody can have their own crew, have your own gang, everything like that. So. Can you use your, your own character? Or are you in the game? Yeah, no, nah, you can create. Like I said, oh, I mean, you obviously, can create, you, can, oh. you know, you create a character. Okay. So I didn't know you, if you had you main can characters. It, like, if I can nah. play Taco and rock the chain. Oh, like. no, nah, nah, But I can put the chain <laughs> in my game. Or you can put That's your tough. car. You can put my, I can put my truck in the game. Whatever it is, like, whatever you like to do. Whether it's this podcast. you I can put this podcast room in this game where we got a podcast on the game bro like that's, that's how wild yes yeah, so like that's how you know how crazy is it, it done that's it's, it's, it's getting developed right now obviously okay. me and the market so we just started to work on it um or you know we just we, we came together maybe a couple yeah. weeks ago to get it together so we really been on that uh heavy the past couple of weeks so uh it's, it should be you know it's getting developed that's it's fire, getting a lot of bro. work uh, it'll be fun i mean like i said y'all gonna have to get a pc come rock with us it'll be fun to play you better, man. You better drop it before gta 6 yeah i know i know <laughs> facts if they ever drop gta 6 i've right. been talking about gta 6 for so long i feel like I it know. ain't coming i so, know right so so the clothing line is out is it out uh the clothing line man is not out. it's supposed to be out it's supposed to we yeah, we've been a lot of a lot of factory delays a lot of yeah you know, yeah 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 problems in that yeah. area that you'll start to learn when you open a clothing company you got a factory yeah. man and dealing with factory problems is definitely in and dealing with uh, business overseas is definitely uh, tough. So, how do you check the matter. products though to make sure they're tailored the way you want them? Um, so it's samples. You get samples. samples. So they send you, yep, they yep, send yep, you yep. samples. Um, you'll get a you get a sample. You'll get to see how I feel. You'll get to make any changes. Usually, you get maybe like two different you know changes you get to make with your samples. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then you know once you get your samples, you can send it back and and uh, they they basically base it off the samples that you your final samples that you like and that you approve and. They kind of send it off of that. Once you give them a tech pack and everything, it's kind of gets complex yeah. on that aspect of it. But um, once you give them, you know, it just really, like I said, I, I was dealing with a manufacturer in, in Spain, so it was a lot of, you know, shipping back and forth. So it was, it was definitely, like I said, this was definitely a learning process for me to time and everything like that. Like, because if I stayed in the States, everything would probably be out by now, and I'd be already working on my second and third drop. Um, it just was, like I said, the, the delay and everything mm -hmm. like that was shipment and, you know, they got different holidays and we got holidays and, you know, so they it's may be closed, we're open. So it just was a yeah. lot of uh, stuff I had to deal with. That was, like I said, it was definitely a learning experience of, you know, yeah. dealing with clothes. But I'll be excited once we still should be getting them, you know, uh, soon. So once we get everything and I'm already starting to work on my second release anyway. So once we get everything ready, like I said, I'm excited for what it brings. I mean, I'm excited we, we 
got some dope stuff coming out, and uh, me and my designer, yeah. like I said, we got some some fire Bro, we, cooking up. You gotta you gotta keep us in the loop on that. Oh yeah, no, nah, I'm gonna definitely like I yeah, said. And like, after I'm first, yeah, and after the first after the first drop, you gotta come you gotta come back on. Oh yeah, no, nah, no, nah, the, the first drop the first drop is just is gonna be more simple. It's gonna be sweat and um sweat shirts and uh, stuff like that. Um, but sweatshirts, sweatpants, and shirts. But the second drop is gonna be more jeans, more uh, you know, leather hats, bags. We're kind of yeah. we're kind of gonna do a lot of different things with the second drop that we're working on right now. So I'm excited. It'll be fun, most definitely. So. Bro, the dopest part that I'm I'm glad you're getting to experience it now is that I mean, you 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 going through all these different things that that is delaying your business at the beginning. Oh yeah. But that's the dopest part because now. After you go through all this stuff, you gonna know what works and what don't no, work, and nah. what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So me, man, anytime I open up another gym, you know it's gonna be so much easier because I know the vendors, I know where to go. Process. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know the whole process. I know the people I need to get. I know. So yeah. you going through that now, and it's so dope. Nah, it As is. you explaining it, I'm just thinking about you know when we first got started and everything that I would have to go through and. The people I had to hire and fired and different people and yeah. the like the whole process, the journey of it is the dopest thing that I think you about to encounter right now. So embrace it, bro. I nah, mean, nah, I know it's delayed, but nah, yeah, yeah. you like, know what I'm saying? What's Just really going to make it shit. worth it is like once I get the finished product, obviously that's what it's like. Oh, yeah, I finally, yeah. every, you know, all this, you know, the BS it's that we had to deal it, with, yeah. it's finally worth it because I got what I wanted. Um, yep. So that's the big thing I'm trying to do is finally get the product. Once I get the product and get everything I really want, I know I'm going to really feel that like, all right, it was all mm -hmm. worth it in the end. Um, Obviously now, like I said, like I said, even now I take it more as a learning experience. I don't really hold yeah. on to it much. Obviously, you know things happen. Um, now I know how early, you know, next the next my next drop or my next how how I do it better or like now you know not to do that. Now I'll just focus here and I won't you know hundred percent go that way. So it was all like I said, it was a good learning experience. So now I know you know moving forward, I don't, I don't repeat that problem. And I'd rather it happen now versus like oh I was going a couple drops and then. My, my next drop didn't fall in line because, of, you know, I didn't know 100%. this. So. And, is, and is everything going to be uh, online to start? Because I know yeah, be down the can, line, yeah. Yeah, I know your first store, it could be in Dallas, but I guarantee it's going to be in L.A., ain't it? Listen, I mean, honestly, I, I'm not I'm not uh, obsessed with make, opening a brick and mortar. I don't have to open a brick and mortar. That's not my, my dream. Obviously, I want to be an e-commerce, you know, to start off. But um, if I can work my, my way into – you know, different top stores when I are like even BCH or something. That'd like be perfect. That. Yeah, like, or, or, or like, or like or even yeah. you know, or like so if I could work my way into great stores or when I'm even in LA, like I I, I shop at uh you know Maxfields or you need to get um, it in Zara's, bro. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> Shout out to my boys uh, over at PC. Well, they changed their name now. Oh, I even know. Yeah, it's the selection. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, that, they, oh, yeah. That sounds exclusive. But you know okay. they just opened up something at Stonebird. So they oh, got two. Really? Yeah, they oh. got. But I mean, but that's an easy plug. Yeah, that's an nah, easy connection. Nice. So like, yeah, so like that's Cause, really cause your, I'm sure your your brand going to fit in perfectly sure. to what they do. Yeah. No, nah, most definitely. So I I'm definitely trying to, you know, that's the next little, you know, journey that I'll go into is really getting into stores or even, you know, uh <clears throat> you know, and getting that really bigger, the bigger the stores, the bigger, you know, the better or even when I go yeah. to London and I shop in London at South Ridges or Whatever it may be that he just know, threw that out there is, casually. My story, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That just well, shop in London. London. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like I Have want my stuff. Week? I want my stuff even even there. Um, I haven't. The, the one thing that the one thing I do want to do is go to Fashion Week in Paris. I have not yeah, been like yeah. that mm. Paris and everything like that at Fashion Week. That's the next. You gonna thing have to, business. especially after you drop your line. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I wanted to after my line. Obviously, now I've been so focused on you know getting everything back in order on the football side of things that I ain't you know. Went out there so much on that, and yeah. I've been also, you know, here dealing with other different things as well. So, mm -hmm. um, but now that's definitely, you know, part of the journey, and uh, I'm excited. Like I said, obviously, I'm trying to take care of this, but obviously, I'm excited for the after, after ball. You know, what, what to do, build my brand, um, and, mm -hmm. and like I said, and keep and keep going. So, overall, um, man, to sum up the football side of it, we like extremely proud of you, bro, and what you was able to accomplish yeah, as being a first that, round man. pick. Man, I was talking to Darius on the phone today, and I was like, bro, like. That's something that we can never go back and say that we accomplished. Yeah. It's simply that's just a, being a, a first round pick. Yeah, it's a dream. Nah, nah it was definitely a dream that I was that was happy to accomplish. Um, it was something I said, you know, as a little kid, something yeah. you always dream of. And then um, you play for the for America's team. You know, and no matter the experience that it went or not, you was able to learn life lessons from America's team. 
then go and travel the world and play for so many different nah, teams. Nah, I didn't play with some you know? great teams. And man. it's not this like like great like there's you, you talked about how much you like how much you learned about from traveling around so much and how much you learned Bro. about the different communities or like yes. where you wanted to be at and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Like it's not a bad thing bouncing around all the time. Oh, no. I know for us as football players, like that's one thing you know as as for our pro- our profession, we don't want to do a lot, but. At the same time, yeah. bro, like, like for real, I, I do want to give you. I, I enjoy we, it. we do gotta g- give you your flowers, bro. You, you uh, like, you know, you, you you had a great career and you still going. Yeah, no, nah, that shit definitely. is fire, bro. For real. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's definitely a feeling of, uh, like I said, I've been blessed. I mean, like I said, that even to be the last as long, you know, you know, you know how it is. You know, the average year is what three years. So even all of us to be might have dropped longer, down to two and a half. No, or think, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So like, yeah, you know, for us to be able to go as far as we went. People like I said, I'd even you know we'd have played with guys that's been in it one year and you know never got to see the field again or been you know maybe a year two years and never got to play again. So you know to be able to go you know to be now going to year seven, um, is definitely a blessing that I don't take lightly. I mean obviously I'm not I'm in a position now where I'm not satisfied. Obviously I want to do so much more with my career, so that's what keeps me working now. Um, you like never will going. be. So it's really that that satisfaction of like I, I still feel like the best I haven't got to show the best of me. The yet. best of you, yeah. So like that's really where it really gets me working now, or really what keeps me going now is like the fact that I feel like I still got so much more to really show people. Hundred mm-hmm. percent um, of what I can do before it's all said and done. Right. Um, right. But now, nah, like I said, like I said, just to be blessed to go from like I said, I didn't play for you know the Pittsburgh Steelers, who you know one of the you know top franchise. I didn't play for the Kansas City Chiefs, one of the yep. you know Super Bowl winners or. You know, got to play for the America's team. So I didn't play with some, play for some great teams and Dolphins. been in some, yeah, Dolphins. Yeah. You know, I've been in some great cities like you know New Orleans. I got a chance to stay in New Orleans. I got a chance to stay in Chicago, yeah. cities that I really never, you know, grew up growing up. I never really been to. I never really been to Dallas until I got drafted here. So it was kind of like. And think about your network. Yeah, you know nah. so many different guys. Nah, You've experienced 100%. so many different organizations. Nah, 100%. Your character is out of this world now. Nah, hundred yeah. percent, man. Met some great coaches. Met some great individuals. Great players. Great homies. I like that. Like I said, you gain so much friendships. You know, meet yeah. so many people from so many different teams. Yep. Um, like I said, not just try to you know come through. I'm try to be a genuine dude, and hopefully you know the, the energy reciprocates. So I try to bring yeah. good energy, and hopefully I mesh yeah. with people with great energy you as do. well. And um. So, uh, like I said, it's just been that aspect. Like I said, it's just been a blessing to meet people that, like I said, it's, it's been a blessing in my life as well. And it, and it, and it definitely it definitely has. And, and uh, you know, once again, just touching on going to different teams, it's like, you know, when you're young and you go to a different <laughs> team, you quiet, bro. And you quiet in the locker room because you don't know where you fit in oh, yeah. and you don't, you know, you're new, you don't know anybody yet. But as you get older and you go to different teams, bro, I remember my last year with the Texans, dog, I walked in feeling amazing. I didn't care if I was going to get cut today or I wasn't going to get cut today. It didn't matter to me. And I would go in. I had fun with the guys. I'm joking around. Mm -hmm. I'm the most lax I ever been. And I'm just so happy to be at work because I knew that that was my last year. You know, (laughs) I knew it. I knew it. And I told people during practice, I told my boy Royce, I was like, yep. I'm going to do this last series, and it's probably going to be my last carry. And I was totally at peace, and I was having so much fun. And so the moment you just let that shit go, I had so much to prove, and I know I was elite, and I hear it from my peers, and that's all I need. I'm definitely not about to go in another league and dominate in – in a in a you know in a different league, what is that doing for me? Yeah, no. Antonio, not doing a lot. Antonio Brown about to suit up. <laughs> yeah, really? Yes, he man. Yeah, 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 they really? need to. Yeah, I don't know what Antonio Brown is doing. I mean, if they cut but, a, uh, they cut a fat enough check. Hey. <laughs> they cut, yeah, right now I ain't gonna lie. If they cut a fat enough check. You play arena. Yeah. <laughs> check, <laughs> half a meal, son. How <laughs> many <laughs> games? <laughs> <laughs> But, well, but no, man. No, there ain't that much yeah. running. It ain't the practicing got to be easy. Y'all in the arena. It can't even Boy, go nowhere. The way, yeah, the way my knees felt the other day. <laughs> I ain't no way. But, but no, bro, at the end of the day, man, you've had, a, you've had a hell of a career. You've had a hell of a football journey. And whether you, you play year seven and it turns into year 14, based on how this year goes, that's the way it goes. And whether you never step on the field again, you got to be proud of what you've done. No, nah, 100%. And you got to be a piece of bless- what you've done. Yeah, it's been a blessing regardless of, of yeah. how it is just to come in, just to play this many years. Like I said, even if, if, you, if you told me as a kid, you know, this would be my story, I would be totally content with that. I would be totally 100%. happy with that. Like, whether it was like, all oh, year, whether, you know, whether how things ain't going, how I wanted to go myself personally now. If you told me as a kid, oh, you're going to play seven years in a league or six years in a league, whatever it is, and you'll be a first-round pick, you'll make this and X, Y, and Z, I would have been 
I would have took you firsthand. Bet I don't even right. need no more. Right. Like so, yep. at that point, when you go, when you look at it like that, you gotta like I said, be grateful. Really, I, at this point, I'm, honestly, it's been you know God's grace that you know to be able to make it this far. Obviously, through injuries and through blessing, different things, um, it's definitely a blessing. Obviously, that's dope. It's because you know you know how injuries in this game is mm. so so crazy, but especially me to come back. You know from a a broken ankle, tearing yep. a ligament in my ankle, stuff like that, where it was, it was definitely tough um, to come back from that and still be able to play the game, get a couple of years out, and, and still be good. It's like I said, it's still a blessing. And people don't see that dark journey you go on behind the scenes. All, oh, yeah, all man. They Them injuries, is, man. Yeah. Oh, they don't see that. They don't see what you got to deal with and how you come back. But well, they quit to the tweet days. something. But Them dark days. Right hey, there. it's what we sign up for. We love that shit because that's how we built, man. Yeah. But it was a – bro, it was a pleasure having you on, dog. Oh, Sharing your story, Every we supporting day. unloading. Unload it, man! Come check Unlo- us out. Speaking Unloaded. of dark journeys, though, what's up? Speaking of dark journeys, Ja Moran, he going through a journey, though, huh? <sighs> <laughs> man, see my situation on that. Like, I understand. I understand he was wrong. Yeah, yeah. I understand he was wrong. He shouldn't have did it. He's a. He's. You got to understand as a, as an athlete, you are a role model. So you know, there's certain things you can't do. Um, but I just feel like it was an overreaction. I feel like he didn't break no law. He wasn't pointing it at somebody. 100%. The, yeah. the first time I felt like was way worse. The first time when you're in the club, in that setting, yeah, he, 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 you he rode a tweaking. team plane, you know, then it starts to get a little bit muddy. <laughs> Hold on. I got to just pause you right there. I got to pause. I got to pause because now we say in the first time <laughs> – yeah, I and mean, now we say in the first time, nah, nah, like nah. now we justify it to say, I'm just, I'm just in this conversation. This is the truth. The truth is, when you're John Morant and you're the face of the NBA and you're a 200 million dollar player, you just can't do that. No, you can't give I, a like damn. Said, di- give a damn if we're going in court and it's like, well, legally he can have it on him, and we don't give a damn about none of the legal stuff. Yeah, but at the end he of the knows, day, though, they at were the end tre- of the day, yeah, but he they knows were, the standard for himself. Yeah, yeah. So if, he, if that's who he is, then go be that. Yeah, but I get that. I get yeah, that. I'm yeah, on both sides of the fence. I yeah. get you. Like I said, I'm on both sides. Where I understand where I'm people not on are both mad. sides. There's one side. I understand where people are mad and yeah. they and they disappointed. Like I said, I feel those same simple things. Uh, but like I said, you ought to realize like it's a young generation. How you gonna act at 28 or how we think at 28? People thinking at 30, 30 plus, they wasn't thinking those same ways at 22 years old, 23. Let's imagine that same 22, 23 year old. Now you worth 200 million. People can't tell me nothing at that point. It's hard for it's hard for somebody to make it through to your head because you getting 200 million at 22, 23 years old. That's more money than your family ever made. More money than most people you ever know ever made in their life. So it's hard for somebody to tell you how to act. Granted, like I said, it was wrong, but one, like I said, it wasn't like it was on his IG and he was repeating the same thing, where it's like, oh, my Instagram. Obviously, he was on his partner's Instagram. It was 111 followers. You Obviously, he probably wasn't thinking nothing was going to come out of it. It's a lot of stuff that, obviously, as a, our partners probably shouldn't have, our, you know, the IG. But you know how it is when they just be happy to be around you again. You know, we ain't home like that or you ain't around like this. You X, Y, Z. So all we around the homie, all we around, you know, you're around you again. Obviously, they'd be quick to bring phones out. And obviously, we in that new age where everybody want to be tough guys, and yeah, you know. And it's funny you brought up I 111 it, followers because he he, if you notice in the video, Buddy looked over and then pointed and then was like, "Oh, let me put it down, bro." Think, you know, you've seen it when you first looked and I, you showed it. I think Quit it's playing. a double standard though, too, because yeah. like um, I do, I think John Moran's dumb. Yeah, I think it was a dumb flash. Move. Yeah, I think it was a dumb. Move. I think he's dumb. Now, I think that I do think that a lot of people is way too hard on him. Yeah. Then they should be. He needs to learn a lesson. Like, don't get me wrong. He needs to learn a lesson one way or the other. But he didn't break any NBA rules, right? He didn't break any legal rules, right? So, like, like we we have to also uh, shed shed light on that if we're gonna shed light right. on him carrying yeah, a gun. Yeah, like, bro, it's it, a lot it, of people that carry guns. I mean, shit. Like after all that stuff, that's all the, the mass shootings and stuff. I mean, I would want people to know that I'm carrying a gun, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so I, I just want to, you know, we, we have to also shed light on that because the media are killing them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then, so, like I said, the media uh, killing them. That, and then, like I said, they grow, they're growing up in this new age with these rappers, whatever it is. Like I said, you you see what they doing in their videos. You see how they act. You see X, Y, and Z. Where sometimes you just think like, oh well, yeah. I want to be just like them. Like I'm, I'm see, doing what they doing. See, like, and I think, I think, I, I think us as black people do need to change. You know what we, you know, are listening to and looking at and stuff like that. Because it's not cool flashing a gun. He do need to learn the lesson. Yeah, no, but like, you know, if he if he just showed people he was carrying, 
You know what I'm saying? Well, it's different. Like, JJ, it shouldn't... JJ Reddick brought up a great point. I don't know if y'all saw that. I did. I did. I did. What, 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 so what JJ was the point? Reddick, expand on it. JJ Reddick was talking about he was coming from a point where legally nothing was wrong with that, right? Mm-hmm. But it's in the way he did it. You know, he is constantly NBA young boy, and is constantly flashing the gun, the flaunt it. I agree with that. Right? I completely but agree But J.J. With that. was shedding light on politics, which I thought was pretty dope. Who, oh, yeah, it's a lot of now, politicians. Who now, when he was talking about these politicians sh- flashing their guns, if you go look at these pictures of former NBA players and, and politicians flashing their guns, uh, I mean, some of them are flat out wrong. But some of them, like an NBA player, he, he posted a gun, but it, it, was, was, a hunting, it was a hunting rifle. He's about to go hunting. So, so people can assume that he's about to go hunting as a sport. And so, but when you get on with a pistol and you, and you waving it around with NBA young boy, it, it, it's just, you know what it is. I think, I, it, I think he, that's, ain't, he ain't legally, I think that's he ain't the about difference. to go shoot a deer with a pistol. I think that's the difference. You know what but, I'm saying? Like, but, but like, is that culture though? Is huh? that, is that because, is that a bad look just because people don't like, that's our culture? Not, I want to say that, not in a good way. Taco, it ain't still. about the culture, Taco. Taco, it ain't about the culture. You're not the face of the NBA, and you didn't get 200 million. They're protecting a brand. No, no, 100. You know you I understand. No, I understand yeah. why the NBA got to do yeah. what they do. I still don't feel like it should be ever a half game. How people are talking about oh, 45, uh, you know, 40 whatever games. I don't think it should be nothing like well, that. that. I, no, think, I don't either. That's no, I think silver. it's at, at yeah. me. I think like it, you know, maybe he get a little 20 game boy. You know, somewhere he feel it and he realized he was wrong and he never, you know, he can't do this again because 20 games is still that still can affect people's season. Yeah. You gotta realize some people don't lose. T- but the Warriors didn't even lose 20 games in a season one time. So, obviously, you losing 20 games and not having your star player, obviously, he feels that. That's a lot. But it's not overdoing it of, like, oh, he got a you know a domestic violence case or something crazy where it's like, oh, he broke a rule or he harmed somebody. Nobody was harmed. Nobody, Nothing was really yeah. done. It just was the appearance of it just made it look bad. Well, like, it was the oh, second time. Yeah. He do need to He do need to stop hanging around people like that, though. <laughs> it was the you second time. Because just what, be, yeah. You know, he do need to stop hanging around people it, like it's that. It's like I said, that's really, it just be your crowd who you hang around. And not only that, it's just like I said, even the fact of like, but you can do what you want to do, just you just don't go out of broadcast. It ain't like, oh, you know, this is going to happen and John Morant is going to be held without no gun. Obviously, he probably going to have a gun. He in Memphis is – I think it's like Texas where it's open carry. Yeah, I think it's open carry. Be. Yeah, it was, it was where it, obviously it was even out here, I wouldn't want to be caught with a two hundred million dollar man wearing chains, wearing whatever, and you don't got nothing in Memphis, like nothing to get, you yeah. know, whatever. And we, like, and we and we get that, but once again, it's we don't. This is all it's about. Number one, w- the suspension is going to be about how the NBA wants to protect their brand. No, 100%. and number two. Number two, we don't know Job Morant and who he's become, right? We don't know who he's hanging around off the field, and we don't know who he is. So we could talk about it all day, but we don't know who that man is. We don't. No one knows because you change. Money, $200 million would definitely change you, and he's probably going through a lot. So those are the two main points, and them are, them are the facts. I just don't – like, Like I get the facts, but I just don't yeah. – I don't want us, you know, on this platform to – to bash him like everybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, like that's you know what I'm saying. Like, I, Just because, yeah. like, that's why like, I hate like, to turn on to every single channel. And everybody, oh, well, he's stupid. He's this. I'm like, bro, he's 23 years old. With 20, like, you know how well, many I, mistakes I would have never want. done that at 23. I do think he is. But dumb. that's like, but that's also environment. I, I wasn't that's in, that dumb. But as environment, who you around? If you in a certain environment, yeah. if you're in a certain he around the wrong people, you around the around, 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 and that's what it's about. We don't know him. He around the wrong people. He listening to the wrong stuff. Like yeah, you know what I'm what saying? He he yeah. he has to start. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all I'm saying. It's like I don't understand why he was on that, yeah. right? But also yeah, like knew, the funny won't. thing is, <laughs> the funny thing is, me and the homies. I'm back at the crib. Me and the homies back in Columbus. Me and the homies. We uh, we was talking. That NBA Young Boy had just dropped this tape maybe that Friday, and we had literally like, you know we listening to it. We like we watching this videos. So we like man. We like uh, we was like damn. I know Josh somewhere going crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> up to this right now, like because you know NBA young boy yeah. be hollering, he just get yeah. people in their fields or whatever. So we like we know he teed up. We I wake up the next morning at the homies crib and it's literally he like bro. Oh, that was because he dropped. Baby? Yeah. Oh and, my and god. That's, and that's yeah. it happened maybe that Saturday or something like that. And it was really yeah. because he was listening to NBA young boy because he just dropped. It's crazy because he just came out and said he was done making music like that. <laughs> and, then he, and, then and then he, he came just back. came and dropped the tape. <laughs> dropped the tape, hollering, bro. Going at, going and, it's, the, and it's worse. It like is, I'm yeah. like bro. <laughs> Yeah, he was on his stop the violence. Then he came back on some. I'm at area. No, he looked the at one the, thing. He looked the, at accounts and was like, "Yeah, I'm a rat." I'm and the one thing that we up. need to be looking at, though, right? Because it sells under this culture. Is the one thing that we need to be looking at is if that affected John Morant like that, 
to be waving a gun. Imagine how that affect other people that's not in his shoes that that oh, don't man, got they, they what ready to crash out, bro. That don't got all that to lose. I listen people, to somebody NBA, that don't NBA got five. Like I said, I listen. I'm not really a guy with picking sides. Like so I listen to Dirk. Uh, like, I don't really with the right, don't pick right, sides. Right. I don't know him personally, so I don't gotta pick no sides. I'm just saying the music but, in general. But how music can that wise, affect, yeah. but music wise, it is the fact of like obviously listening to him. You like obviously music changed how, how you are. Obviously, you listen to certain music when you want to feel when you feel in a certain <laughs> way. You listen to certain music before a game that gets you, t- you know, 100%. feeling that way to get ready. Obviously, there's certain music, certain tunes. So obviously, obviously, them them vibrations, you know, it it make you feel, you know, certain ways. And obviously, it got it gets to the point where yeah, a lot of young guys, I feel like, you know, do crash out over music. They hear yeah, what they, 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 see, they see what these rappers do, or not even see what they do. They hear what they talk about and think that's what they gotta do, and and then it just it create that divide where obviously, like I said, sometimes, you know, I never get on rappers. I'm my homie's rapper, so I never get on what they say. Obviously, they rap about their life, what they're going through. It just be, can sometimes be detrimental also to the to the community um, when they think that's the only, that's when, when the little kids think that's how they got to act to also, yeah. you know, get out no, or get sad. what they want. It's like my little cousin told me, I was like, what do you, it was last summer, I was like, what you, who you listen to? And he, he said, NBA young boy. I was like, really? What, what you like about him? And he don't know. You know, I said, how do you relate to him? He don't, he don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's just because nah, it's cool. I mean, I ain't going to flex, it's cool. though. Like, I, if I was a young guy, if I was 18, 19 coming up, I'd, I'd tell my homies, I'd probably be listening to him, too. Like, that'd probably be yeah. with my favorite artist. He a young boy hollering. Like, you feel me? Us growing up from, you know, growing in the inner city. And, you, like I said, I grew up on Wayne. Wayne was kind of, he was a different way. But it was that same type of, like, oh, Wayne going to holler, too. Whether, you know. Yeah. Where, I, think, I think it needs to change a little bit, though. And, no, and, no, 100%. And I, I, mean, I, I think it needs to change just because, of, you know, the effects that it have on our culture. No, you no, know nah, nah, definitely. And it that was the point can. that I was trying to make about John Morant is, like, he got everything to lose. And you see the effects that that music, I mean, nah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm he assuming. He was ready to crash out he over it. Crash <laughs> out. Not, uh, he was ready to crash out, literally, because it's people that really be ready to crash out, kill, you know, do whatever, do some dumb stuff. Yeah. But it's the fact of, like, he still, like I said, even even with that, like, he listened to that, he ready to still risk certain things. So it is, like I said, it is where we got little cousins or whatever that's listening to that. Obviously, it do, you know, sometimes it do. See, that's what I worry. want us to pull out from it, though. Like, yeah, we can judge Ja, whatever. We can do all that, right, judge Ja from what he did. But I want us to pull out, like, okay, what can we learn from this situation? Like, think about everything that happened in this situation. What was the effects? Like, like how did – what affected him the most to – to start waving this shit, you know what I'm saying? It was probably what he what he was listening to and what yeah. he what, obviously what the music, feeding, yeah, obviously was feeding the music, his mind. Him, him, you know what I'm saying? saying? Actions is is literally comes from what you're thinking. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what causes you to act out on different shit. So like, it had to be something that he was listening to that is deep down in his subconscious mind that making him wave a gun. Because I mean, shit, you know, and it was probably the music. You know, yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess time will tell. Time will tell. I, I guess time. I, I, meanwhile, I, meanwhile, I pray they don't go crazy. On gotta, him, man, I pray they don't go down. crazy. Well, I pray he just goes to. I hope he figure learned. it out in yeah, a facility somewhere. Yeah. Like yeah, it I ain't even about what his suspension is. It's like yeah. literally just fixing him. Yeah, yeah. I hope yeah. he. You I know what I'm saying. You gotta have a sit down, sit down with bra. In the LeBron meanwhile, did it for so long. Meanwhile, kids can't he even. Do, he do need to be. He do need Who? like a bra. He, he yeah. need like a real vet. Something. That's one thing the Grizzlies don't have. It's like a real vet in their locker room, like a real vet. Yeah, he's, like he's a, good, they definitely so don't. A Kwame Brown vet. <laughs> you see how <laughs> Kwame was snapping nah, on them. Nah, you, <laughs> a, you need a vet that's also like <laughs> it's hard. Like it's hard. Like Haslam, Haslam. Yeah, yeah. But like Haslam. people respect. Uh, uh, people respect uh, uh, UD because also he been there. He put in the work. You respect yeah. what he's done. So when he say something, you respect it. You got to, like I said, to, for for a job, for like for a vet to come in and him really take that. You got to also have a bet that's been there, that's done mm-hmm. that, and has success. That's so now bet. it's like, oh, yeah, I understand. Matter of fact, I'll listen to you because you actually had success doing this. Versus, like I said, even in football, it's hard for you. Imagine a vet coming in telling you, it's like, bro, yeah. you ain't did nothing yeah. yourself. How are you going to tell me what to do? Yeah, but for but, you to listen to, like, D-Law or Ty, yeah. you know, you can listen to them. Yeah, because they've they, done they, stuff. They've been, they done, done this yeah. for a long time. You know, they got years in. So it's different than, you know, somebody in, you know, Talking to you and it's like, bro, you barely play it yourself. You ain't really done nothing yourself. How are you gonna? T- I'm better than you. Like, I you think that's the best tell? thing like, so the Grizzlies the- can do for him, though. 
But, yeah, I mean, so I can say that. But, like I said, I think he'll be fine. Obviously, this is another learning experience. Obviously, to me, this this that eye awakening one, the one where he know, like, all right, ain't no more ain't no more chances. Obviously, Adam Silver, you know, everybody that has stories, whether it's Carmelo stories or whatever, uh, that has stories of Adam Silver sitting him down and letting him know. Obviously, the NBA, like the NFL, they know what you're doing at all times. Like, mm-hmm. they, you know, they got investigators, they everything like I mean, that. The N- NFL, NBA, they, like I said, they just as much as – and with him yeah. having the Nike deal, replacing Kyrie, I mean, even on 2K, they got him, you know, they got him out the game, sitting down on the bench with a, with a suit on. <laughs> so, like, he has a lot of other things going that, that it could all come down because yeah, I mean, I hope not. Guns, I mean, you know I hope not. I hope, I hope this, this like yeah. I said, he didn't break no law. He didn't hurt nobody. No individual was hurt in, his, in them circumstances. So, I hope that, you know, <clears throat> that, um, no, you know, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't happen. Obviously, Kyrie's situation was different. You know, it was that whole all he came at a group of people who felt hurt in X, Y, and Z, and that's why, you mm-hmm. know, that happened. So I hope that this John Morant situation don't come down to him now losing deals and losing money all over. I really, I showed my mom the clip, and she didn't even see the gun at first. Like, so well, it's, it was a like, big, it's a big deal. We're not going to act like it's not. No, no, no. It is no, a big not, deal, but it's just not, a matter we're of We're not like, going to downplay it. It is a matter yeah. of, like, it's, it's just crazy how, like, that. I don't want him to lose it off of just – it was like what half yeah. a second, yeah. like. But it was you really it was the second time though. It was no, a big no. deal, but it was a big deal. <laughs> it was the second time. It was a big deal, but a lot of people has done worse. Yeah, a lot of people yeah, have well, done worse, and a lot of people here, has though. done similar yeah. things. All what I'm are we saying comparing? is like, what are we comparing? I, I hope they do the best. Thing I mean, we didn't have stuff in the league now. The Pascal Burr shot himself in the leg. Like, we, come on, we didn't have. Yeah. You feel me? We didn't have. You know, people come with little gun cases or get found. You know, so it, it's that happen. And it's 2023. Gilbert though, Arenas. Too. That does matter. It's 2023. It does I mean, matter. Gilbert Arenas was the worst. By far <laughs> the worst. Yeah, Gil, but but if if we he had if we had live uh, and all that back then, things would be way different. Yeah. yeah. But it's the era he's he's in too. It is. Yeah. This is the area we come up in, but I mean we could talk about y'all. We could talk about y'all, but at the end of the day he made a decision and we'll see what the consequences are. I just hope he gets right. You know what I'm I saying? I hope they do the best thing for him, which is bringing I hope back. he does the best thing for him himself. <laughs> he needs <bro. laughs> like he's so I think he I, I think, think he just listen, needs to do what's best for himself. All right. He's a talented player, man. Yeah. He's, he's so young. Player. He young. Yeah. I hope like I said, yeah. I hope that we could throw know, the young another, card out there. He gets another he's twenty three. He's old enough to know. That's so. still young, though. It is young, but it's we all. Are you was just the same one that was just on here talking about how once you get yeah, twenty seven, twenty eight, I wasn't talking about flashing the damn gun, bro. But that's how you grew up, though. That's, <laughs> but I'm saying that's, though, but like, did he grow me, up like that, Taco? I don't know him. See, I don't, you he may know, have, we don't know though. this he man. May have, so, we don't so know if him. He did grow up that way. Then what? He's been in the league since he was nineteen, or was it later? It was it's twenty. Three years. It's like, what, three. He's, he's only he's only been in the league. Oh, three he's years. been in the league. And three fame years. came at him real fast, real fast. Because he, he wasn't like a high yeah. profile guy, yeah. so it was like all of a sudden he was that. Yeah, you know, you're the face now. So obviously, well, you know what? We're gonna that, and not only the culture of, of NBA, but he in the culture of Memphis. Like you look at the Memphis rappers. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. And, and when it he's happened, affected. look all the Memphis rappers who spoke up. Like, what's the problem? He wasn't mm-hmm. doing X, Y, and Z. About three, four Memphis rappers spoke up about it because in the culture of Memphis, that's probably fine with them. Yeah. Like they thinking like, what's the deal? We ride, our, we do it ourselves. We ride with our strap. We X, Y, Z. So obviously, when you surrounded around certain stuff, um, then it, it, it it's different. And you and gotta, not to come out the city yeah. of Memphis, like respect. Uh, my grandma used to later respect the city, of Tennessee. Yeah, like, I got but, a lot of family in Memphis, but the culture, I got a lot of family in Memphis. the culture is just different. Culture is different. Culture, culture, culture is different. Is different. But like, the culture has spoken on it as well, too. You know, Memphis. Shit, he probably was riding around like that, so nobody try him. It was like, yeah, you see me with my boy, man, but try can, me if you want. Man, we can talk about that all day. We don't know what's going on. But yeah, well, I mean, we don't know. The like I said, I just hope Memphis has, has already said, like, you don't want to do this. Nah, you nah. Don't want to live the real life of nah, a Memphis. Nah, yeah, you he definitely know, don't want to. He, he don't, definitely did. Yeah. He, he don't, he do don't got to. So he don't. He definitely don't. Want, but I mean, that's a lot of like you could say the same thing for a lot of rappers, but they still went back and did it. So, you feel what I'm saying? Whether it's like they made money, whatever, from you know, even in Memphis, from the push. So we're, we're I mean, just like you, you just he came seen, up like that. We don't, seen, we don't know. How, I mean, we all did know. say he came from. Or Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne said, hey, the kid came from 3,000 people in South Carolina. Yeah, yeah, we don't yeah, know yeah, him. Yeah, we don't. And, and, I, and I was like, he's no. damn right. We don't know no. this man. But we we'll don't. find out in due so time. So let's not man. judge him. Yeah, I'm not I, judging. I, I, I definitely. I, I, I definitely. I, I, def- I was one of the well, ones. Well, you wanted to bring him up. I didn't even want to talk about him. Bro. I wanted to bring him up just because, like, <laughs> I, I want to create talk our him. own narrative around him. And yeah. I think that's what, that's, that, that's, that's what 
uh, like, and that's why I respect like Draymond, right? After the games, he get on the he get on the shit himself and yeah. show it and give his own narrative about the games and what happened nah, and stuff like nah. that. Yep. Instead of like you know like somebody else controlling the narrative, he kind of controls. I mean, because that's what happened nah, with respect, you in the Cowboys. Yeah, the coaches, it, yeah. the coaches say their narrative. So I think we need to give our own narrative about Ja, and that's why I wanted to bring him up. Cause I don't want to bash him. I do think he was dumb. But yeah, was just, he wrong? I didn't, yeah, I just didn't want. You know, it just, was he when wrong? You go, it's hard. Me, I just been know, there when you what's got wrong in when that you situation? got you know hundred thousand people attacking you. It's kind of hard to kind of yeah. hear what people are trying to say. You know, it's hard. It's hard to hear help when you got people coming at you. Dumb, you this, you X, Y, and Z. It's kind of like you start to turn off everybody. Like, all right, yeah, well, so I'm trying to hear what none of y'all trying to say there. Let's just so lift him up, man. Let's so lift I just him hope, up. Yeah, like I said, I just hope he he makes his best decision. He's a great player, great talented player. So I hope you know. I hope we, sake that he able. To I think turn we can around. lift him up, pray for him. You know, the more people that's actively trying to support him instead of like they bashed him the first time, and that probably led into. I mean, I don't know how that could, but it, for him, it probably led into him doing it the second time. Like instead yeah. of people surrounding them, it was like, bro, like, I mean, obviously he through the situation. Now yeah. you see rappers like, bro, you don't want to like that's that's yeah. not cool. Like you don't want to do that. He didn't. He he don't have people around him that's, just, that's telling him that. No, obviously yeah, he's his dad not. It. You know what I'm saying? Like the first time I already know what it was. He probably meant to be on his Finsta. Realize he was on his real Instagram. Post it. Supposed to be a Finsta post. post. <laughs> So that was, I already hey, know. Man. I already hey. know that first time was that Finsta post. Hey. Supposed to hit the Finsta. Wasn't he supposed to hit the real IG? Hey, and hit the real IG. You wake up late the next morning like, what happened? Oh, that was the real Instagram. Now that wasn't even my Finsta. He was so, lit. so that was one of those. I feel like that was definitely one of those. The oh, second time, shit. it was really the homie. I, real talk, I don't think the homie really tried to. He tried to look out. When he popped, he, yeah, tried, he tried, he tried to, to, like, to turn it fast. He tried to turn it fast. Tried to turn it like fast. I said, it ended up being so fast. I showed my mom, like, you see this video? Look what he did. My mom was like, where's the gun? I was like, oh, it's okay, back there. But she had to watch like three. I had to really put it on pause for her to be like, where we're is about it? to end. We're about to end uh, this right, combo. But, but, but check it. Did you not see Buddy look at Jaw first before he flashed the camera? But it ain't like Jaw went like this. Wow. You know, he didn't do that. He kind of. <laughs> but the thing is. Ja was on some like this at first, then he yeah. went down, and then he came back up with that jump. So he came up quick in a half a second. Like he was like, yeah, he did, he did, he, he did. He low key did. He did, uh, did low key cover. He did low key cover. Buddy has a hundred game of fast. Yeah, that's how many buddy tried to turn it. His how many followers turn does Buddy have now? Anyway, yeah, he turned up. Oh, no, yeah, but, but he yeah. probably did to you. Oh damn! So you saying he did that shit on purpose to get? Anyway. That season, <laughs> that's the first episode that's of season crazy. two. We ain't talking about Jaws side characters, you know. No, no. But Jaw Morant himself, own, no. the main character of Jaw Morant and who he surrounds himself with, I, I pray that he gets it right. Yeah. Because yeah. he's a generational talent, and I need to see him succeed on the court and off the court. Yeah. Because he's a special person. No, yeah. you know, you can change a lot of lives, man. Change a lot of lives. Yeah. I'm pretty sure his community, communities he involved, I love, I hate to see, you know, money take out of, you know, Black man's pocket. I feel like yeah. you know a lot of times we get we can it change our generation, change our family generation, and not only that, like you know, as much as when you got money like that, you not only can help out your family, you can help out you know multiple Other different families, family, families in yeah. different ways. So yeah. I hope you're able to you know change. I like I said, I like to give back and you know help out myself, but okay, obviously so. I don't have. Two hundred million to go get yeah, back. Two hundred million, <laughs> so, so, million, you can start a so, lot. I just yeah, seen Jay Z so and Beyonce yeah. bought, a, bought a crib in cash for two hundred million. Yeah, just yeah. to let y'all know, that's yeah. where Jaw can be headed in the future. Anyway, exactly. man, dope episode. Yeah, Taco, nice you time, gotta bro. you gotta shout out how everybody can follow you, keep up with you, uh, mm. social media handles, your companies. Yeah, man, the Supreme Taco is mostly everything. You go to Supreme Taco on Twitter, Instagram. That's all me. Um, uh, Loaded.co is my uh, on Instagram is my clothing company, but you all can find everything like I said from my Instagram or anything like that. It's all on there. So show me love, man. Hey. Appreciate, love. You, nah, appreciate you, Taco. We getting you back on, Taco. Nah, nah, nah. Especially when you having, drop. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yes, nah, sir. Nah. I appreciate y'all having me on, man. I appreciate that. Love Definitely. You, Until next time, my dog.